All right, guys, this is day 10. And as you know, every five days is uh, the improvement day. So the first thing I'd like to showcase um, an improvement of is the dice. Okay. So spawn the dice. Guess what? Guess what? Yes, sir. We got it. We got it to print. <laughs> got it to print the number. Do it again. Three. Yep. Yeah. That's one, it prints one. And yeah, so I'll just uh, showcase this script. All right, so basically, I did not use ray casting, and I did not use, well, I did use the C-frame, but I did not use like the, the C-frame angles. I did, I did try that, but like I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out, you know? But uh, what I did do was I used vectors. So a commenter on, on the channel, Myoxity, um, he helped me out a lot with this. He taught me vectors entirely. Oh yeah, he also taught me dot, which is interesting. It's it's kind of hard for me to explain. So basically, every face has a vector, right? So for the front and back faces, you have look vectors, right? Um, there is no like look back vector, but you know, there's a look vector and then a negative look vector if you want the opposite of that, right? So there's look up and right, and then their negatives would be um, back, down, and left. So how did I assign each number to one of these look vectors? So I just looked at the dice. I took it out of replicated storage, and then I placed a decal on it. And what this allows me to do is when I hover over each face, it tells me what face it is in the properties right here. So five is left, right? And if we take a look at here, right? Um, if it's left, then the vector would be a right vector, but because it's left, it's negative right vector. And guess what? That's five, right? So I assigned five to that. Let's take a look at, hmm, let's go one, right? One is, is the top top face right so top would be up right up vector one right let's take a look at six six is opposite to one um so it's it's an up vector as well but it's down because it's on the bottom face and there we go six right so after i made this this table um i made two variables the first one was number rolled and the second one was highest dot value. So basically how dot works is it it returns numbers based on if they're looking at the origin or not, if that makes sense. So if something's looking up, um, the dot value is 0, 1, 0. If you have a dot value of 1, that means that it's looking in the direction opposite to the origin um you know origin is zero 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 so it'd be right here where the spawn point is right and let's say the origin is this point here or this this sphere right let's say let's say this is the origin um if i have the dice and hold on a second dice is looking this way right so it's looking up that's away from the origin. And that gives you a value of one. Um, because it's up, it's the middle. It's the middle value, so X, Y, Z. And yeah, so that, that gives you a dot value of zero, one, zero, if it's looking up, right? Um, so this for loop sorts through this table. And it looks for which one produces the highest uh, dot value like which face produces the highest dot value, which tells us which face is looking up. Depending on what face rolls the highest dot value, that is the number rolled. And then it prints the number rolled. Um, that's kind of the best way I could explain it. Um, yeah, thank you, Myoxity, for teaching me this. Next, we have the Katana. All right, so we still have the same equipped, right? And then we have the slash. Uh, the first thing I will say is the slash. 
um i kind of tried to line the like the appearance of the hitbox with the animation now it appears um kind of when like you're actually hitting the opponent um animation wise oh yeah as you just saw there is a second slash implemented um so if i click and then i click again it does the second slash so there's also a debounce so i can't just spam click i'm spam this is me spamming click right now i can't just spam it and like have like a million hitboxes come and kill my opponent um so yeah currently there's only two m1s i might add more but i kind of i kind of like the way it is now um i'll just show you the script all right so in the script here's where i did the debounce so i i made cooldown false and then i put all of the code in here for if cooldown is false right and then if cooldown is false it says it's a true yada yada you, you know you know how debounce works i i hope and then for this part right this is the chain so this is the m1 chain by default it's at zero um if chain is at zero then it plays the first animation track and then it plus it adds one to the uh to chain's value then if chain is one right so on the next time that this runs chain would be one and therefore it would play the second animation track um so i did do this before but for some reason i had um my slash two animation i had it listed as one so <laughs> it kept playing the same animation i was confused i was like why is this not working and and my oxidy helped me realize that i had this as one and not two so it was giving me the wrong animation so yeah all right so the next thing would be the wand uh i i made it so that it doesn't just delete abruptly i also gave it a, a different texture i don't know if you could see it but uh i also made it come out of the tip of the wand instead of just like coming in front of you um it doesn't it no longer spawns like a completely separate part to emit particles from um even though that was the challenge i, I found that pretty uh like inefficient so as you guys suggested i just made it emit from the the wand and um uh, in terms of what that comment wanted me to do i i could apply it to the katana when i make hit effects for it if i hold click it just continuously emits um particles but I made I made a max distance so it can't just like go super super far and like spread out around you. So yeah, I, I mostly just played around with the settings. It's still just white, um, just with a different texture. And yeah, it kind of looks like little little sparkles, little magic. I guess it fits with the uh, the fact that I made the Deluminator from Harry Potter. Fits with fits with the little little wizard wizardish theme, magic theme. I don't know. If I just click, it just sends out like one or two little orbs, one or two little particles, I don't know, and then they disappear. So for the script, I took that one comment's uh, advice and I just, I used the uh, the dot enabled property. So when you click with the tool, um, the, emitters, the emitter is enabled and it emits 10. Um, technically... <laughs> Technically, it doesn't do this. This is this is kind of wrong because if you just hold click, it's it's gonna keep looping this. So so it doesn't do this. But um, then when you let go of click, a uh, emitter dot enabled becomes false, and therefore it, it like fades out, or it stops producing particles and doesn't just disappear abruptly like in the in the first video I made about it. Oh yeah, the Hogyoku. So the Hogyoku I actually haven't gotten to uh, fixing. Um, I was struggling with the dice a lot, which took a lot of a lot of the time. But uh, it still it still does the exact same thing. What the? F <laughs> um, am I am I anchored? Oh no. Um, yeah. So if I just click, it doesn't get rid of the previous effect, like one comment told me to do. Oh, that's actually hilarious. What the hell? I'm actually getting some good rolls. Oh, 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 oh. Is that my head? <laughs> what the hell, bro? 
What did they do to me, bro? Oh my god. Yeah, the Hokyoku is uh, extremely detrimental. Don't try this at home, guys.